Uh, so as you know, we ended up buying the Sun Odyssey 34.2 uh, down in uh, Racine, Wisconsin. And while it's still winter here in Minnesota, uh, we are uh, we got excited about things and we bought a bunch of stuff that we know we're going to need. We purposed a few things, so we're just going to go through some of that today. We are currently suburban homeowners. We'd love to be sailing cruisers, but for now, we're in the middle. All right, so. Um, First thing I want to talk about is this uh, wonderful Lake Superior uh, um, cruising guide, Bonnie Dahl's book. I actually bought this a couple of years ago when we were doing some of our chartering up there. It's really kind of a necessary thing to have. Uh, then there's this Nigel Calder's, um, they call this the boat owner's Bible. Which like think. most boat. Yeah, all the cruisers have this. This is uh, a lot YouTube of- Any other channel, you've probably seen it. Yep, a lot of electrical. Uh, design stuff and maintenance stuff and diesel stuff and it's a big heavy thing but gotta have that uh, we already had a chart of the uh, of the Apostle Island so that's coming on board obviously but then I did go ahead and pick up the full chart of uh, Lake Superior uh, because despite all of our electronic navigation uh, fanciness, uh, you always need to be prepared with paper charts. I did take a navigation class, so... Yeah, I'm taking the test yet. I haven't taken the test yet. Uh, so also then there's some, uh, some various chemicals that we're going to need. Uh, some nasty things like uh, goof off and uh, PB blaster, WD-40, things like that we'll need for maintenance, carb cleaner, all this stuff's horrific. You ne would never want to get that anywhere near the lake. And um, some nastier cleaning products like your Clorox and this stuff, this uh, conchrobium is what everybody recommends for getting rid of and keeping mold away. It's about the only thing that works inside a boat. It's probably horrible too, but uh, hopefully you use that at a, you know, to a minimal amount. Because when Minnesota isn't cold, it's hot and humid. Yeah, well, and just molding boats in general, I, I think yeah. there's just no way around it. Now for, uh, you know, topside cleaning and stuff that might get anywhere near the water, something like Simple Green or uh, which is biodegradable and you know relatively uh, non-toxic, uh, and a lot of people use like which dish soap is it? Dawn. Dawn is it? dish soap is or that was recommended. One yeah. of them, yeah. Um, I'm glass cleaner here, CLR. Just general yeah. cleaners. General cleaners. This stuff is supposed to be good for. This is like a um, uh, mild abrasive kind of restore for a gel coat, fiberglass gel coat. Because we're gonna take off the old name. Polish. Well, yeah. just in general, we gotta have this yeah. just to kind of keep yep. the keep the gel coat up. Um, I don't think this one's too toxic either. So that's kind of our range of um, initial set of chemicals that I think we'll have on board. We do have um, flooded lead acid batteries on board. So those things do need occasional maintenance. They have, uh, they need to be topped off with distilled water because they do lose a bit of water over time. Uh, so we'll need some distilled water on board for that. Uh, just a few other items here. We do have some lettering and some existing graphics that we're going to need to remove. So we've got some scrapers we're going to be bringing on board. Uh, this thing that goes on a drill that's good for taking off vinyl lettering and graphics. Um, some we don't want to have here. any curses, so we want to get all of the old name all off. The old, yeah, all that needs to go. And then we do have registration numbers that we need to put on. This is just a pack I got off of Amazon that has all the... I think it's got four of each number and letter, so they've always got everything you need there uh, these now this is this is more luggage we bought these in time for our Miami trip to the boat show recently but these are dry bags but they're also backpacks um, they are uh, they're carry-on size which is nice 35 liters each I think so Kelly has one and I have one these would be nice for bringing things in the dinghy that you don't want to get wet and also when we went to the boat show they were awesome because they are carry-on it's the only luggage we had and it rained a lot at the boat show my and boat show we went to so nobody yeah. else had bags that were this heavy duty and we actually got actually somebody stopped us on the water taxi and wanted to know what brand they were because they were so impressed so these are good. these have already we've already got use out of these but these will be good for just for cruising in general, I think. Uh, let's pick up some other things we got on the floor here. So these are just, these are so, these are knee pads. Uh, Stefan has up. delicate knees. You should protect your knees anyway. Anytime you're kneeling down on any kind of hard surface, these were, I think $20. They're not super cheap, even though they're 
not fancy ones, but a lot cheaper than knees. They're replacement ones for because he had an old set that half the threads on that cruises forum about people with bad knees. So there protect you your knees, people. Not necessarily just because of boats, because people just tend to pick up bad knees in in uh, middle age anyway. Yeah. Uh, so here's some other things, some small things up here. This is, so this isn't necessarily just boat related, but this is a kilowatt. It's a, a, a voltage and wattage meter. And I use this to confirm the items that we bought, like our shop vac here. Um, it might be the main thing that's up here. Well, even for, cause I want to be able to use my Instapot. Yeah, the Instapot, exactly. So this we use to make sure that the current draw of the appliances that we're thinking are taking on the boat are uh, low enough that they can be handled by the inverter that we'll get to next. But this is a this is a cheap item. This is useful around your house anyway, just for figuring out how much appliances draw. Um, we've got our uh, infrared uh, thermometer, also useful for coronavirus um, <laughs> detection. Detection uh, <laughs> and cooking. And the, the infrared thermometers are good for lots of things. Uh, polarity meter for the outlets on the boat, make sure the shore power is working okay. Obviously this is a repurposed item as well. Um, this is one of my favorite things. So this is a, uh, a proper marine LED anchor light. Uh, this, the anchor light's probably the most important bulb on the entire boat in terms of power drawer because the thing is on all night. Um, and it's on in a situation where solar panels aren't going to be working, the engine's not going to be running, so it's running entirely off the battery. The one that's currently on the boat, the incandescent one, draws 10 watts. This draws half a watt or something, or a tenth, or oh, maybe Although Stephen is one. obsessed with LED light bulbs in general. This is this the is most good, important yeah, one to switch. Important. If you only switch out one bulb on the entire boat for LED, it's the anchor light. So, so this we'll is be... our for now boat that we're, I mean, five year boat, but Stefan is still gonna replace all the light bulbs on board. Well, certainly this one, because this well, is an sure. important one. This is the this is the one that'll drain your battery overnight and make it Well, so that makes sense. Is the anchor light like, that's on the boat even working? Yeah, it works. It was, okay. But, uh, so we'll be installing this when we go down to the boat in, uh, in, uh, in an upcoming episode. Um, let's see what else, headlights. One for each of us did buy these. These have both white and red lights, so uh, you can use them uh, at night with the red light to... We also uh, used this when we were in Puerto Rico, didn't we? Uh, we might have done. They're just, they're just generic just lights. Just yeah, for walking. Yeah. Uh, so the boat does not have an hour meter on the engine, and I like to know how many hours are on the engine, so I bought this hour meter. And then I, 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 we know roughly how many hours are on the engine, so I actually took this and hooked it up to a battery for about those about the right number of hours, only about 90 hours. But so when this gets installed on the boat, it will read the actual number of uh, hours on the engine. Yeah, the previous owner did have a log. He just didn't have a he meter. He did. He was very, yeah. um, very detailed. But exactly. What else we got? Just uh, just repurposing a couple of. I uh, got a Swiss Army knife and a Leatherman here. Um, so clothes pins for drying stuff on the uh, lifelines. Wooden clothes pins, so if they fall in the lake, uh, we're not dumping plastic in the lake. The wood will eventually rot, and I assume the spring will rust eventually. So this is a chance it'll be great. Um, I can't remember what we had for existing fire extinguishers on the boat, but um, I wanted to pick up at least one small one uh, for the galley area. A newer one anyway, because we don't know the age of the ones that are yeah. currently on. So we'll probably end up replacing all of them. So I just picked up one because I was at Walmart anyway. This thing's like under 10 bucks. It's like, two of these is the legal minimum for the boat, which is crazy. You definitely want more mm -hmm. than just two little ones like this. So we'll probably pick up a, I think West Marine has a bigger, like a, a pack of two of two bigger ones that would certainly fulfill the legal requirement too. So we'll probably get those as well. Um, I don't know why they're in white versus red. I think it's, I'm not because sure. It's, it's a, basic. It's the same thing. It probably just means they charge a little bit more money for it. Um, paper towels, a uh, large, large thing of uh, zip ties to keep things organized. You never have too many zip ties. There are 650 in here of various sizes. You've already gone through like a lot of zip ties. Like, we used to have a ton and we could have been Yeah, you can go. Life. That's not a lifetime supply. You can go through a lot of zip ties. Um, we have a repurposed um, Bluetooth speaker that we'll use, but I, I don't even know if there's any. I don't think the boat has a sound system and we don't listen to a lot of music anyway. So we'll get by with our phones and, and, uh, and this Bluetooth speaker. Um, these are, so this is, I've had this bear spray for a long time, but there are some of the islands that will be on and the apostles do have bears. They're just black bears. They're not dangerous, but it doesn't hurt to have bear spray with you. Also can be used in a pinch as a personal safety device. 
Uh, same thing with uh, wasp spray as well. Some uh, cruisers have recommended having that as a personal defense item, which is not going to get flagged by anybody. Um, the anchor that we expect to get is a uh, Rockner 15. And on their site, you can download a PDF that'll give you a full size, um, I don't know, what do you call this model? Mock yeah, model. Uh, template, I yeah. suppose this would be a template. So I print it all out, put it on cardboard, and we will take this when we go down to the boat on our next trip and make sure that it fits on the bow roller. You can see where all the various dimensions are. And uh, yeah, so it was kind of fun. That was a fun little project making that. Um, what else we have here? So the um, steaming light, which is the light that you have on when you're motoring at night, that sits about halfway up the mast, has a broken cover on it. That's something that came out of the survey. So I couldn't just buy the cover just by itself, but just buying a new light um, wasn't too expensive. So when we're down in a couple of uh, weeks here, we'll uh, be replacing that with at least the, the lens part and the, uh, the lid part. I'm assuming that a, a line or something, a uh, halide or something, just got stuck on here and ripped the top off. So we may replace the entire thing with this, but we may just replace the bits that we need and, and keep this as a spare. Um, this, so this bulb, this is an incandescent bulb. I probably won't replace this one because the only time this is lit, it's the engine's engine running, yeah. right? Um, this is a deck light that sits on the bottom of it. I may replace that, but um, I've heard that it, the lights, especially the ones that are on the mast, it's important to get proper, good quality marine ones so they don't interfere with your VHF radio. Um, versus the ones that you might put in the cabin that might be cheaper, you know, knockoffs or something. Speaking of VHF, so we had this uh, handheld VHF unit from before. This one will get used uh, in the dinghy um, and uh, when we're ashore. Um, the, uh, uh, for the main radio uh, in the boat, the one that was on there is probably original to the boat. It's 20 years old. doesn't have uh, digital selective calling. The DSC doesn't have built-in um, you know, distress uh, functionality and doesn't have AIS or GPS or anything like that. So for 300 bucks, I picked this one up from Defender. Um, this one is, I think they just replaced this model with a, with a more up-to-date one that is on the NEMA 2000 standard. But this, so this one is a little bit older in the way that it networks, but it's still plenty good for what we need. Uh, I have this hooked up to the uh, Raspberry Pi that we'll be using for navigation. Um, and we'll see that in a second here. Um, then we can, we can talk about that more at that point. A um, couple other things here. This is, a, <laughs> this is a bulb tester that I built, a little 12 volt thing with, uh, uh, just runs off of AA batteries that lets you test bulbs. We use this, actually I use this on the survey. Uh, I'm surprised the survey didn't have something like this actually, but that's a little trinket there that we use for, I'm sure for things on the boat. Uh, this is, uh, so this is a, a voltage step up module that I got off of Amazon that we'll use to power the monitor that we'll use for the navigation system. It takes the 12 volts from the battery and it runs 19 volts into the monitor. This is a monitor we had laying around. The reason I'm using this one is because it actually uses a, just a regular laptop power supply. A lot of monitors, the, the, uh, they need full. Yeah, they, well, they, they use AC and the, yeah. all the conversion stuff's inside the monitor. This one uses a brick like a laptop, um, which is nice. Um, this is a uh, shop vac. Uh, we didn't want to bring our home shop vac because A, it was way too big. You can see how nice and cute this one is. It's small. Um, but also, more importantly, this one draws uh, 700 watts. So it's small enough to be driven by the inverter, which is this lump here. This is the most expensive thing we bought, uh, for sure. Can you get that? Yep. This is the most expensive thing we bought uh, by far. I think this was maybe $450 by itself. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it'll be a good thing to have. Now, you know, given the kind of cruising that we'll be doing and the use that our boat is gonna have, do we need an inverter? No, we don't need an inverter. But the, part of this boat is... Right. None of the boats that, that we've been on in Lake Superior or, frankly, the charters we've been on in the Caribbean, none of them have had inverters. Um, but part of this whole have a for now boat is learning for when we're living boards and yes. what Yeah. So, uh, and we'd like to be able to work while we're yeah. on the boat, which means powering laptops. Uh, we'd like to be able to cook, 
which yeah. might mean powering. As that. you can tell, Stefan is very focused on our power usage and power. Well, we have yeah. to be because power. So power and. Well, a water. lot of a lot of the people that are living boards that we follow on YouTube now well, they, they say that all the time. Power consumption. Yeah, you yeah. Power is, water and power. In yeah. fact, where we are in Lake Superior, water is not an issue. Be, yeah. Get all the well, fresh water we want. We're on it. We're sitting on a huge freshwater lake. So power is the most important thing. Um, and being able to run small AC appliances will be uh, be really useful. This is about the smallest high quality permanent installation inverter I could find. Uh, it's a, up to a thousand watts. I think it, it'll do a peak uh, 2000, but it's pure sine wave, um, which means instead of having a modified step sine wave, it has a you know a real sine wave, which means it. Um, it'll run electronics well. I was going to say, isn't that better for computers and stuff? It, yeah, not so much for computers because those have their own bricks, oh, yeah. but, but for anything like, uh, like a TV. Okay. You try and run a TV on a non-sine wave, an AC TV, and you'll, you'll brick it. I know people that have done that. Um, so this will, I'm hoping this will mount in the seat under the, the, nav, the nav station okay. seat. Uh, this, uh, the control panel display thingy yep. uh, that can be that comes off and can be mounted remotely. It's okay. just got a cable that runs to it. So uh, anyway, so this is a uh, what is this Xantrax? Yeah. So um, should be good. We'll see how that works. It'll facilitate our learning. Yeah, that's a big part of the brief of this boat is education. Uh, for the same reason, I mean, so one of the features that the uh, one of the features that the radio has is AIS, is an AIS receiver. Um, <clears throat> do we really need AIS? No. Um, but it'll be it'll be a good thing to get exposed to and a good thing to learn about, and that's that's part of what we uh, that's part of what we want the boat for. It's part of what we're going to be using it for. And then we also but, bought that cord. Yeah. Last but not least. <laughs> I probably should have bought the 50 foot and not the 100 foot, but this is a 100 foot 12 gauge uh, three wire extension cord that I picked up at Menard. So this will, uh, you know, a thicker, heavier cord is better for uh, heat dissipation and it's all safer and that kind of thing. So uh, it wasn't it wasn't too expensive. Um, yeah. Should we look at the um, the details of the navigation system? Yeah. All right, so there's a few things to be looking at here. It might look a little complicated right off the bat, but it's really not that bad. So on the input side, we have that radio that I mentioned earlier. This has a, a GPS unit built into it, and it has an AIS receiver. Uh, so it's receiving data potentially from any other ships that are in the area or boats that are transmitting AIS. Um, we're, we're right here. This is our actual GPS location. There are no boats around here, so we're not receiving anything. Um, that feeds the GPS and AIS information in through this uh, RS422 converter into the Raspberry Pi that's running open plotter. I'm powering that off of, uh, this is called a buck converter that drops the 12 volts that will normally be supplied by the battery, but it's being supplied by this little power supply here down to a little more than five volts uh, that the Raspberry Pi takes. There is a, uh, we've got a, a heat driven uh, CPU temperature driven fan. It's not running right now because the CPU is not hot enough. Um, and all of this stuff on the Raspberry Pi open plug and all that runs on a little, there's a little 32 gig uh, micro SD card, which is nice. Uh, we've got a little, uh, I don't know if this is a Bluetooth keyboard or a little remote keyboard anyway. We'll be running OpenCPN uh, on this thing for our primary navigation. But we also, I also have a Plex, uh, Plex server installed on there, so we'll be able to bring our uh, movies with us as well. Be able to use this for entertainment in the evenings while we're at Anchor. So there you go. That's it. That's our haul video. Um, hope you enjoyed it.